This is the 2020 Kia Telluride, and it's the new family SUV from Kia. It's about the same size as the Ford Explorer and the Toyota Highlander, and it's priced like those SUVs too. And it's now officially on sale, firmly entering Kia into the world of the three-row family SUV. I've borrowed this 2020 Kia Telluride from Covina Valley Kia here in Southern California, east of Los Angeles, where they have all of the new Kia models on sale, as you can imagine, and there are a lot of them. You have the new Soul, you have the new Stinger, and now you have this, the Telluride, Kia's first SUV designed to take on some of the most popular family haulers in North America. To be clear, Kia already has the Sorento family crossover, which has has three row seating, but the Sorento is smaller than the Telluride and that third row is pretty tight. The Telluride is designed to address that complaint with more interior space and more power to make it a firm rival to competitors like the Honda Pilot, the Toyota Highlander, and the Ford Explorer, which sell in the bazillions. Like most of those vehicles, the Telluride comes standard with a V6, in this case, a 3.8 liter V6 that makes 290 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, which are pretty healthy numbers. The Telluride has boxier, brawnier, styling than most of its competitors for sort of a bolder look, and prices start around $32,500 for a base level Telluride, which places it within a few hundred dollars of the Explorer, the Highlander, and the Pilot. This is an upper level EX model, and the price on this one is just under $39,000. It's also the hottest new SUV on the market if you're looking for family transportation. I've had dozens of people already email me, tweet me, asking me to review the Telluride, even though it's just been on sale for a few weeks. So today, I'm going to do just that. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of this car and show you all of its quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Telluride, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of my favorite vehicles named after places. Now, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Telluride in the back seats. Usually I start up front, but I figure most of the people who are buying one of these are going to be using it as a family car, so they want to know how the rear seats work. And getting into the third row is especially easy. To access it, you press this little circular button on the side of the second row seat, and then the second row folds forward and provides a path to get into the third row. Very, very simple and useful. And the path to get into the third row is actually rather large, despite the fact that I'm a fairly tall adult, I can climb back here no problem, even though the third row is primarily intended for children. Okay, so now that I'm back here, let's talk third row. As you can see, I fit back here just fine, but that's with this seat folded forward. If I fold this seat back, into place, I have a lot less room back here, and the third row really is primarily intended for children, but an adult could be back here in a pinch. Now, one cool thing about getting out of the third row, you don't have to reach all the way back up and find that little button to release the second row. There's a button right here on the back of the second row. You just press it, and it does its thing. It folds forward, and then that pathway is created to once again get out. Other items worth noting here in the third row, one is the fact that the third row in this vehicle has three seats, and there are three seats in the middle row and obviously two up front, which means that this is an eight-seater vehicle, which is pretty impressive. Some of these three-row SUVs stop at only seven seats, but I will say you won't be putting three adults back here. You could put an adult on either side in the third row, but the middle seat is very much only for small children, and even then, probably not for a very long ride. Other interesting items with the third row, for one, it isn't a complete afterthought like it is in some cars. You have cup holders back here. In fact, you have three cup holders, one for each seat. You also have USB ports back here, so third row passengers can charge their devices even though they're in the furthest back seat. And speaking of being way back here, this is Kia's biggest SUV ever, and it's pretty far from the front seats to the third row. So if you're driving this car and you have one of your children in the third row, you won't easily be able to just talk to them and tell them something. 
fortunately, Kia has a solution for that. It's called driver talk, and it works similarly to Honda's cabin talk feature that I showed you in a Honda Odyssey review a couple years ago. If you didn't see that, check this out. You go into the infotainment system and you select driver talk. And then while you're speaking, you're not just speaking to yourself. Instead, your voice is amplified on the rear speakers. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate this. Take a look. Okay, so obviously I'm sitting up front here and I've turned my microphones off. The camera is mounted in the third row and it's just recording what it's hearing, which is the same thing your child would be hearing if your child was sitting in the third row. So I turn around and this is without driver talk on. Here's what you hear. Oh, I'm driving the Kia Telluride. Ah, oh, the Kia Telluride. Kia, Kia Telluride. Children, stop fighting. Okay, so now with that in mind, I turn on driver talk. Now take, take a listen. listen. Hello. <laughs> Quirks and features. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, this is so much fun. I sound like I'm a radio announcer. Welcome to the Kia Telluride Summer Sales Event. <laughs> Anyway, the point is that driver talk makes it easier to talk to your third row passengers. And if you want to turn off driver talk, you don't have to go into the infotainment system. You can just press the end call button on the steering wheel and then driver talk is off. Now back to normal. Okay, that's the third row seat. Now I'm climbing into the second row where there are a couple of interesting quirks and features, starting with the fact that the second row USB ports for second row passengers to charge their devices, they're located on the back of the driver seat backs over on the side, which is kind of quirky little interesting place to put it. I also like the fact that on the back of the driver seats, you have these little cargo storage pockets, pretty standard, but in these cargo storage pockets, there is a second smaller cargo storage pocket get integrated into them for smaller items like, for example, a cell phone. Next up, another interesting item of the rear seats is on the ceiling where you have the climate controls. This car has three zone climate control, so two zones in front. And then there's a zone for the rear, which means that the rear passengers can adjust the temperature, the amount of air, all that sort of stuff. Of course, the front passengers have the final say, so they can lock out the rear controls if they don't want the kids back here playing with the climate controls. Another cool item in this car is the fact that it has built-in rear sunshades for the second row. They're not power operated, but they're there. You can lift them up from the door panel, and then you can have a sunshade to shade your baby or a child back here who's sensitive to sunlight instead of having to just stick one on. Some rivals still don't have this feature, but it's really, really good to have in a family SUV. SUV. And speaking of family SUVs, I should mention it's quite roomy back here. Even for an adult, I have absolutely no problem with headroom, legroom. There's a ton even sitting behind the driver's seat where I would sit if I was driving. I have room back here. And if you need more room, you can always move the seats forward or backwards. They slide into all sorts of different positions. And this seat slides as well, even though it's the larger of the two. So you have a lot of different possibilities. You can even recline the seat just a little if you want to kind of lay down back here and get chauffeured around by your parents in the Kia Telluride. Now, next we move on to the front seat of the Telluride where there are several quirks and features worth noting. But first I wanna start with the interior materials. The interior materials in this car are very, very nice. I think this car has a much nicer interior than its rivals, Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander. The buttons look nice. They feel really nice to press. There's no blanks. This car also has this nice wood trim that goes across the dashboard that gives it kind of a classy upscale look. This is a really nice place to spend time. I think better than rivals which is surprising me for what is effectively Kia's first entrant into this segment. In fact, in this interior, you even get three center climate vents, not just your usual two. With that said, there are a couple of things that I would change in this interior. For example, the door lock. It's impossible to tell whether it's locked or unlocked. The difference is tremendously subtle, so you never really know if the doors are locked. And if you're worried about that sort of thing, you'll probably be pressing the lock and unlock button just to make sure as you're driving down the road. Another thing that I would absolutely change and immediately is the placement of the driver side climate control dial and the volume dial. They are right next to each other, literally within an inch. They are the same size, the same shape, the same material. And I guarantee it's gonna happen very frequently. People are gonna go for the volume knob and accidentally turn up the climate control or vice versa, which will be annoying. Those two things should never be placed that close together. Now, the other thing that I would change in this interior is the gauge cluster screen in the middle. It's just this kind of small black and white gauge cluster screen. There might be a better one on the upper end Telluride models, but this one is almost $40,000. 
And for that money, I would expect just something a little bit nicer in there. With that said, this gauge cluster screen does have some interesting quirks and features of its own, starting with the fact that it will monitor your attention level. Basically, how long you've been driving, do you need a break? It will even tell you when your last break was. But my favorite thing is it shows you your attention level in the form of a graph. Some cars just say you need a break. This thing actually displays on a high to low scale what your current attention level is. So you're driving along, you're getting tired. You're like, no, no, it still says I'm a two of five. I can make this. Next up, maybe my favorite item in the gauge cluster is the fact that there is a configurable option in this car to adjust the power tailgate opening speed. <laughs> you ever get behind your power tailgate and you're like, this thing isn't fast enough. We need more speed. Well, in this vehicle, you can do that. You can set and adjust the speed at which it opens. Unfortunately, only two adjustments, fast and normal. I personally would go with fast. Of course, in this gauge cluster screen, like in other Kia models I've reviewed, you can also turn on or off the welcome sound, which actually doesn't play when you turn on the car, but when you turn it off, still it's a wonderful thing to hear. Take a listen. Ah, the welcome sound. But joking aside, there is one other item I really like in that gauge cluster screen, and that is a reminder to check the back seat. If the car knows that you opened the back door and then closed it and then got in and drove somewhere, when you turn off the car, it will actually remind you, have a look in the back seat, and that way you don't forget anything back there, including potentially a child. It is a really good idea, and frankly, all cars should have it. It's a good feature. Now, next we move on to the infotainment system in the Telluride, and I've already reviewed this infotainment system in several other cars, the Kia Stinger, the Kia K900, and I will link those videos in the description below so you can go into greater depth. But on a general level, I should say I really, really do like this infotainment system, one of my very favorite in the business. It's wide enough that you can see three things at once, which is important because you can have the map up and not have to cancel the map to change the song on the radio. You can see everything. It's a really, really good system, and it's tremendously responsive to your touch. The moment you tap your finger on it, it moves very responsive to your touch, just like a smartphone. It really is one of the best infotainment systems in the entire car industry, which is a good thing because Kia puts it in basically all of their vehicles. Now, next up, a couple of interesting quirks of the infotainment system. I've already shown you driver talk, but there's another interesting new idea in here, and that's called quiet mode. And the way that works is if you turn on quiet mode, the car will mute all of the speakers in the back seats and it will only leave on the speakers in the front seats. But even then, those speakers won't be allowed to be adjusted over volume level seven, which is fairly quiet. The theory here is you're a parent on a road trip, your kids have fallen asleep in the back, you can still listen to music up front while you drive, but the music is muted in back so your kids can sleep and it's quieter up front so it won't disturb them. That is a pretty good idea for a family SUV. And next up, here's another great idea. The steering wheel has a mode button on it, as most cars do, so you can cycle through the stereo modes, you can change between FM, AM, Bluetooth audio, whatever. Well, in this car, you can also go into the infotainment system and remove some of those things from the mode cycle button. So for example, if you only want to toggle between Bluetooth audio and satellite radio, you can take everything else out so you won't waste time going through different stereo media players that you're not going to use. Now, next we move on to the cargo area of the Telluride. Obviously, it has a power tailgate, so you open it, it opens right up, and you can see there's not really all that much cargo space back here with the third row in place, although that's fairly typical of vehicles of this size. Usually you need to fold down the third row in order to gain a bigger, more gigantic cargo area. One cool item though with this vehicle is there is a load floor underneath the cargo area. If you pull this up, you can see you have a separate loading area under there, so you can put items that you don't want rolling around back here or something that you don't want to be able to be seen if you look in the windows. Now, next, we got to talk about folding down the third row of seats. Now, I review a lot of luxury SUVs where you come back here and you push a little button and the third row folds down automatically. And that's very nice, but I got to be honest, nothing is easier than this. It's down. The other side? It's down. It takes literally a second to fold down these seats. Now, I love technology and cool features, obviously, and I always hate those people who are like, I'll never have a screen in my car. I'll never have a self-driving car. But in this case, 
You gotta admit, this is easier than any other solution, including a little button, which just adds complexity and time to this relatively simple process. The second row, it's worth noting, does fold with a button, although it isn't power folding. You just press this little button on the left side of the cargo area to fold the second row seats, and then they fold forward. And once you have all the seats folded, you can see there's a lot of space back here. This vehicle effectively becomes like an enclosed Kia pickup truck, and you can drive around with large items if you need. Now, one drawback to the fact that these seats are not power operated with a button is the fact that then you have to manually put them back up when you want seats again. With the third row seats, pretty easy. You just reach back here and it's up. Same deal on the other side. Just reach here, pull on the latch, put it in the place you want, and it's up. But the second row is a little bit more cumbersome, I admit. You have to open each individual door, pull a latch, push the seats back into place, go around to the other side, do the same thing, which does take longer than a power seat button. By the way, one other item I love back here is the power tailgate height adjustment. Now in some cars you can choose if you want the power tailgate to go all the way up or to stop at a lower height because maybe it'll hit the ceiling in your garage or whatever. In this car you don't just choose between low or high you can actually pull the power tailgate to exactly the place you want it to stop and then you hold the power tailgate button and then that will set its height and it will always remember it which is a great idea. You can pull it to open basically just as far as your garage roof and leave it there rather than having to use the pre-programmed heights from the car company, that is really a smart, smart idea. And finally, on the outside of the Telluride, I wanna talk about styling. Namely, the fact that I really like how the Telluride looks. So many crossovers and SUVs these days are just basically copies of each other. Although, this isn't as common as they get larger like the Telluride, but especially the small SUVs, they all look about the same. The Telluride, though, has way more style, and one contributing factor is this big grill in front. Instead of having a soft line that slopes down like a car. It really looks brawny and bold and muscular how big and upright it is. And I think that gives the Telluride more of a capable overall look, like you could tackle terrain in this thing if you wanted to. I also really like up front the way that the running lights look. You can see there's basically this little LED box around the headlights. Those are the running lights for this car. Very distinctive look for a very distinctively styled car. And it's the same story in back. Once again, the Telluride carries its sort of brawny, bold, boxier, more muscular look to the back that gives this thing the look of more intense capability than its rivals. Even though that might not be true, it does have that look, which is nice. I also really like the taillights of the Telluride being upright like this, gives it a more substantial look compared to normal, boring taillights like most other SUVs have. In general, I really do like the look of this vehicle, and I'm surprised that it comes from Kia. Kia is usually pretty conservative with their styling. They don't want to rock the boat or do anything crazy. But in this case, they went brawny, muscular, and kind of took some risks. And I think, and I hope, that it will pay off for them. And finally, we move under the hood where you can see the 3.8 liter V6 that powers the Telluride. As of right now, this is the only engine option. Like I mentioned, 290 horsepower, 260 pound feet, right around there. Those numbers may sound big and muscular, especially for any Europeans watching this, but they're actually pretty standard for this segment. The Toyota Highlander, the Honda Pilot are both right around there with their V6 engines as well. Now, one other quirk I like in the engine compartment of this car, I've always loved Kia's little warning label that explains why you shouldn't stick your hand into the engine fan. The label actually shows someone's fingers getting cut off in real time. It is just wonderful. I only wish Kia would add little droplets of blood so we could really get the full effect from this warning label. And so that's a comprehensive look at the quirks and features of the Kia Telluride. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Kia Telluride. First thing I want to mention for this money, I didn't talk about it before, but you get a lot of safety equipment. You get blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, so it'll steer you back if you start to drift down. Forward collision braking, if you're about to hit something, it'll stop for you. You get rear cross traffic alert, so you're backing up. It'll beep if there's a car coming that you can't see. Obviously, you get a camera. It is a pretty well-equipped vehicle in terms of safety. And I complained about the quality of that gauge cluster screen, the black and white one, but I would rather have the safety stuff if I had to choose between the two. So I still can this car pretty good value. And you have a nice driving position here. You sit up higher than some mid-size crossovers, um, but either way, you do feel like you, you're kind of above the world. 
reasonably quiet in here, fairly typical of uh, midsize SUVs in this segment, not particularly unusual or different. I do think the interior stands out though. This is a nicer interior than most of the of the rivals. I think Kia did that because, you know, Kia already doesn't really have a presence in this segment, so if they're gonna compete, they almost have to be better than the others um, for people to notice them. And this interior does that. Feels reasonably quick, uh, enough passing power, exactly what you'd want. Sitting in a stop light and driving in general, it's reasonably quiet. Um, again, sort of in keeping with class rivals. You know, there's not that much new and crazy and different stuff that can be discovered in terms of driving experience for these midsize SUVs. They all have about the same sizing, about the same power, about the same transmission. There's nothing particularly crazy that's gonna happen. So instead, what you kind of, what you start looking at and what you start expecting is differences in equipment, safety features, which this car has a lot of, and new and interesting technology like driver talk and like the quiet mode, which I think is actually a really, really good idea. I think people don't buy cars in this class because of how they drive, but they will not buy them because of how they don't drive if there's some glaring flaw. And I'm happy to report this car has no obvious glaring flaws. Visibility is good, the mirrors are big, you can see everything. It's just a really, really competent package. Um, which is no surprise. Kia has been making a lot of vehicles that are really, really competent packages. And so that's the 2020 Kia Telluride, which is an excellent family crossover in a market that's full of excellent family crossovers. And it's debuting at the same time as the Hyundai Palisade, which will share many of its same benefits. But this is a great car and it comes with Kia's great warranty, which offers five years of bumper to bumper coverage and 10 years of powertrain coverage. Those terms are unmatched by any rival except for Hyundai. Anyway, with that in mind, now it's time to give the Telluride a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Telluride is a handsome SUV, but not quite distinctive or attractive enough to earn more than a 5 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is 7.3 seconds, which just earns it a 1 out of 10. Handling is normal for the segment, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor, despite its brawny styling and muscular look, it's not especially fun to drive, but that too is normal for the segment, and it gets a 1 out of 10. Cool factor, this is the hot new SUV, and for right now it earns a 2 out of 10, though I'm sure I'll revise that down to a 1 as these start to get everywhere. That gives the Telluride a 12 out of 50 in the weekend score. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Telluride is loaded with a lot of great safety and convenience stuff and it gets a 7 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the segment and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality 2 is normal for the segment and it gets a 7 out of 10. Same story with practicality. Three row SUVs with this many convenience features always get a 10 out of 10, including the Telluride. Finally, value, and there's a lot to like here. It's spacious, practical, attractive, and well equipped, and it gets it's a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 38 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 50 out of 100, which places it here against some similar family vehicles I've tested. The 4Runner TRD Pro wins overall because of its off-road capabilities, but the Telluride beats out its closest rival on this list, the Subaru Ascent. The Telluride I test is slightly better equipped than the Subaru and just a little cooler, but both are excellent choices in this crowded family SUV segment. Tell your ride, snow falling down. I was waking up in that sleepy little town. In her eyes, the world came so alive.